You know, I'm not, I'm not so sure it is. Um, I tend to look at graphite exploration and development mm -hmm. as sort of traditional mining enterprises. Uh, and I look at graphene research and development as something totally different. Mm -hmm. So I think in a way, uh, you're comparing apples and oranges. Um, my sense is that uh, you know, the, the graphene exploration plays that have really moved towards graphene development might risk taking their eye off the ball a little bit um, and really developing the, their graphite stories. So, you know, I think graphene is very interesting. I think it's early days for, you know, what we know about it and what its real potential is from a commercialization perspective. But I think that um, any sort of diversification away from a graphite story developing its, its, its property is going to be challenging. Well, I, you know, with respect to graphene, I think there's a great deal of progress that has been made in a relatively short period of time. Um, the knock on graphene commercialization, if you will, is that it's just not cost competitive. It's too expensive. I mean, $100 a kilogram or maybe a gram or something like that. It's just way, way out of whack, I think, with where, you know, a commercial sort of end use for a, an industrial mineral or a wonder material like graphene could potentially fit in. So, you know, I also need to get my head around understanding where graphene could fit in. Is it a medical use? Is it infrastructure? I mean, where is graphene best suited? So back to your question, you know, I think that investors should be looking at what's happening in research labs. They should be looking at what's happening in universities with respect to R&D. Uh, they should be looking at companies like IBM or BASF or GraphTech, all of which have dozens of scientists devoted to graphene development and graphene research. And I think that will provide a clue in terms of where we are in terms of really commercializing graphene, but it still seems to me like it's early days right now. Well, I think, you know, cobalt is a metal that kind of falls into the security of supply challenge, if you will. You know, the majority of it comes from, let's just say, unstable parts of the world in, in the Democratic Republic of Congo mm -hmm. and uh, some other jurisdictions as well. So, you know, if you're a believer in the story of technolo technology moving forward, battery usage, super alloy demand, all of which cobalt is critical for, I think, you know, now is the time to potentially be looking for economic, potentially economic deposits outside of the DRC. You know, I, I'm not going to go sort of so far as to make actual recommendations right now, but again, if you are looking for cobalt deposits outside of, um, you know, let's just say the DRC or other jurisdictions, the two that obviously come to mind are Global Cobalt, which has a, a deposit which actually we know a great deal about in Russia, um, and then of course Formation Metals, which has their deposit in Idaho. And so, you know, kind of keeping an eye on them and seeing how they're doing pushing the needle forward um, is a good, I think, way to learn about the, the market and learn about potential supply and demand. And I would also take a look at Freeport Macmoran. I mean, they obviously are a copper play, but they produce a number of other metals and minerals, one of which is cobalt. So to get a sense for what the cobalt market is doing and supply and demand going forward, I think, you know, keeping a close eye on Freeport is, is an interesting way to kind of learn more about it.